Okay, chapter one, matter, measurement, and problem solving. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think is the most important idea in all of human knowledge? Don't, don't say anything out loud, just think about that. We could probably have a very long discussion about this in a very heated debate, right? Well, if we limit ourselves to scientific answers, probably the most important idea is that the properties of matter are determined by the properties of molecules and atoms. That's probably not something you would have come up with just sitting there thinking about it. But this was a huge deal when this idea first came out. What this means is that atoms and molecules, the smallest particles of matter, determine how the entire piece of matter behaves. If the atoms or molecules are different, then the matter is different. Understanding this allows us to modify matter to create new plastics with specific properties, other new types of materials. It gives us control over matter. And so it's a big deal. Chemistry is um, looking at the atoms and the molecules because they affect the properties of matter. So what are atoms and molecules? Well, we could define atoms as the submicroscopic particles that constitute the fundamental building blocks of ordinary matter. Submicroscopic means that they are below the microscopic level. You can't see atoms with a regular microscope, an optical microscope, no matter how powerful and fancy it is. They are too small. Atoms by themselves are very rare in nature. Usually they are combined with other atoms into molecules. And here's an illustration of a water molecule. It consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, and they're bonded together. I think of atoms as being a lot like Lego bricks. You guys ever played with Lego bricks? At least seen them? You know what I'm talking about. So you take the little bricks and you stick them together, right? And they click together, and then they, they're, they're, they stay together pretty well. That's what a molecule is like. Think of this as a little white Lego and another white Lego, and they're stuck onto the red Lego. They're stuck together, and so they're going to go around together as a unit. That's a molecule. But we could take this molecule apart. It would take some effort, but we could take it apart into its individual atoms. The atoms, though, the individual Lego bricks, you cannot take apart with your bare hands, can you? They're, they're hard plastic. You can't just cut them in half by thinking about it or anything. Could you get out a hacksaw? Yeah, you could, but that's not what we're talking about. That would be nuclear chemistry, and that comes later. So the properties of the water molecule determine the properties of the water itself. So here's water, and this is hydrogen peroxide, which is very similar to water, the only difference being there's one extra oxygen atom. What's the big deal? There's one extra oxygen atom. Well. That causes hydrogen peroxide to have very different properties than water. Hydrogen peroxide, if you, if you drink that straight, would kill you. I'm not sure if you could even get it far enough in your mouth to swallow it, but that would kill you. Whereas water helps to keep you alive. So there's this joke, these two scientists went into a bar, and the first scientist sits down and says, I'll have a glass of H2O. And the guy next to him says, I'll have H2O too. They drink their drinks, and the second guy dies. Yeah. I did it better than I did yesterday. Um, so small differences in molecules create differences in the properties of the matter. And that's why we're so interested in these teeny tiny things. To understand the substances around us, which you know plays into every science, right? Biology is not chemistry, but biology depends on chemistry. Because to understand what's going on in a cell, you have to understand what the chemicals are doing as well. It, it plays into physics and geology and everything else. So um, chemistry is often referred to as the central science. I think it's the most important one, but you know that's my own opinion. Here's another illustration of 
the differences in materials caused by the differences in the atoms and molecules. Here we have carbon in the form of graphite. If you're writing with a pencil, the lead in your pencil is graphite. There's no lead in pencil lead. It's, it's carbon. And carbon um, in the form of graphite makes an excellent writing material. It also makes a good lubricant because the carbon atoms are arranged such that there are layers they are, they are strongly bonded to each other in these layers, but between the layers are only weak forces, and so the layers slide and it's slippery. So you can smear graphite on the page and, and write with a pencil. This is a diamond, which is also composed of pure carbon. But here, the carbon atoms are bonded to each other in a three-dimensional way instead of a two-dimensional way. And so a diamond is incredibly hard, it's clear and colorless, it's see-through, unlike carbon as graphite, which you can't see through. So chemistry is the science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter by studying the behavior of atoms and molecules.